Chinese timber firms are plundering Burma for hardwoods, which they then import in defiance of the law, according to environmental campaigners. And claims Global Witness, Burma's own military is colluding in the illegal trade, which is worth hundreds of millions of pounds a year. Burma is an international pariah state, condemned for its human rights abuses, where uncovering information is almost impossible. But a crew working for Channel 4 News was smuggled across the Chinese border into Kachin State, where the insurgent army, on ceasefire for a decade, says it will go back to war unless local people get a better deal. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Miller, has this exclusive report. In a land of megacities, there are still in south-central China places uncluttered by people, forested mountains arcing north into India and Tibet an ecological treasure trove. Logging is illegal in Yunnan province. It has been for a decade. China's forested frontier with Burma is protected. There are two huge nature reserves on the Chinese side. But China's concern for the environment stops at the border. Predatory Chinese logging firms accused of plunder in Burma. Ru Li, a booming Chinese den of iniquity, a town grown fat on cross-border contraband and the timber and drugs trades. Its glassy glitz, a veneer on its seedier sidelines. Hello. After dark, sex for sale everywhere, often trafficked girls from over the border in Burma. China's HIV AIDS epidemic started here. Ru Li now has the highest infection rates in the People's Republic. Next door, Kachin State has the highest HIV rate in Burma. It's no coincidence. The disease spreads along the timber truck routes. Just outside town, an illegal crossing. Up and down this frontier, 15 tons of smuggled timber coming over every seven minutes. A million cubic meters in 2004. Bosses baffled by the presence of a camera. Within minutes, evidence filmed of why environmental groups claim vast tracts of Burma are already logged out. An unsustainable trade, and says Global Witness, illegal. These so-called luxury species, teak and tamalan. Other hardwoods and softwoods are smuggled out too. Illegal exports, illegal imports, worth 300 million US a year. Since the Chinese government said it would clamp down on the timber smugglers four years ago, it's grown by 60%, lining the pockets of Burma's generals. Burma denies exporting teak. China denies it is or would ever plunder timber from neighboring countries. As the wood smuggled out, a crew working for Channel 4 is smuggled in. Kachin State, strategically sandwiched between India and China, in 10 years transformed from an obscure war-torn hellhole into a pillager's playground. The crew's escorts, the former nationalist Kachin insurgent army, on ceasefire now for a decade, but grumbling that the peace dividend has been banked by what they still call the Burmese oppressor and loggers from China. The Chinese are the transporters and the buyers, and later they export the logs to China. This illegal trade is being done by these businessmen in league with local Burmese army officers. If we stop the timber trade, there will be conflict between the Burmese army and the KIA. And so it just goes on. This, a small operation, but we're told it's illegal. The loggers, all Chinese. Just off border back roads, zoom lens glimpses of loggers at work, loading from stockpiles. This timber from teak forests far to the south. Mostly it is illegal. This timber yard manager says 200 tons of teak leave his yard every week, all for China. The Kachin borderlands, controlled by the KIA under the ceasefire autonomy deal, mostly logged out long ago.
But elsewhere in the state, under the aegis of the Burmese military, rapacious logging continues, the highest rate of deforestation in Burma. And all roads lead to China. To get the logs out, Chinese road building gangs are brought in. Logging companies have built hundreds of miles of roads. Opium and heroin traffickers are known to use these routes too. Drugs are the biggest source of black market dollars for the generals. Happy shiny tribespeople beam down from roadside billboards. This is Majayang, Kachin tribespeople, swamped by the incomers, a town run by mafia. It's unwise to film openly here. Chinese gamblers, most cross-border commuters, fill the casinos. They're run by a network of big Chinese companies. Today, Majayang is full of brothels and drug dens. Many local Kachin are practicing Christians who despair over what's happening. Moral decay, they say, has gone hand in hand with the timber trade. I feel sad. We can't stop them by force, so we're trying to teach them about Jesus Christ. We've lost our forests, the big trees I remember from my boyhood are now disappearing. I don't support the logging industry and I will never involve myself in such a business. The former guerrillas today patrol their own tribal borderlands, but they're now compromised, in bed with the enemy, bankrolled by taxing the timber trade. Global Witness reports that the bulk of the money meant to fund health and education has been misappropriated. The former rebels now said to be losing their people's support, a belief that the ceasefire had more to do with selling trees to China and get-rich-quick schemes than with addressing the grievances that underpinned the insurgency. Rebel armies the world over have a habit of losing the plot once the war's over. Restarting the war, now one solution. The Kachin people do not like war, but now war is inevitable. We have tried political negotiations, but it was impossible to negotiate with our enemy. If the Burmese junta could just understand what the Kachin people want, and if they are willing to negotiate, then our future will be a peaceful future. But the future does not look bright. Then again, neither is the present. Promises of peace and prosperity have a hollow ring now. For the people of Kachin, as with millions of other Burmese, daily lives are plagued by poverty. Ecological devastation now adding to a catalogue of woe. Dirty dollars earned from the illegal timber trade fuel conflict the world over. The threat now, that unless China stops it, it'll rekindle the Kachin conflict too. The spotlight's now on China, its plunder exposed, its much-vaunted fraternal cross-border relationship built on little more than greed. Jonathan Miller reporting. Well, we did ask the Chinese embassy for a comment on that report. A spokesman said it was still considering its response. The embassy of Myanmar, which is what Burmese government prefers its country to be called, said the report by Global Witness is based on disinformation. In real life, border trade between Myanmar and China is under the supervision of the authorities from both sides with no illegal trade, including the export of timber products from Myanmar crossing into China. The embassy went on to say that Myanmar had long supported sustainable forest management and rejected the Global Witness report.